All right, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to be talking about how to host your own Git server using a Raspberry Pi. This will allow you to one, keep control of your own code, meaning it's all yours, and two, means you will never have any size constraints as long as you've got the hard drive space on your Raspberry Pi. So if you don't know a lot about Git, Git is an awesome way to manage code and other projects. Basically what it allows you to do is commit pieces of code and all group them together. So that means if you have a team of people working on code, they can all be working on it together and then merge those in slowly over time without breaking anything. Another thing it's great for is having revision history. So you can go back to old revisions of code you've written and say, oh, this is where that broke. I'm gonna go back and see what code I had there and pull it into the future. It's a really great way of managing everything, though at first it is a little bit tough to understand. This also can be used for personal projects, even without a team of developers. I personally use Git to version control all of my code whenever I'm writing it. That way I can always go back and see old versions of the code and be able to get the most recent version on all of my devices. It ends up being really easy and hosting it at home makes it quick and easy to set up and I know that that code that I write, nobody else is gonna have access to unless I give it to them. So I'm gonna be doing this tutorial on a Raspberry Pi 4 and using it on my Mac. Though Git works with Linux, Mac, and PC, and so you should be able to work with it from wherever using your favorite Git client. But for setting this up, we're gonna go over how to do it purely command line driven. And I think that really gives you a good way of setting things up. Another thing to note, if you want to use this outside of your own network, you can do that. But do not just port forward the SSH port from your router to your Raspberry Pi. That is an awful idea and is a huge security vulnerability. Instead, what you're really going to want to do is set up a VPN server on your Raspberry Pi. I would recommend setting up a WireGuard server. It's incredibly easy to set up and I've got a tutorial for how to do it in the description below. Then from there, you can always just VPN back into your home network and be able to access your code from there. And even better, you can also access all of the other assets on your network as well. So if you have something like a NAS, you can access all the files that are stored on there over this VPN. All right, so now what do you need to get this tutorial started? Well, you need a fully functioning Raspberry Pi that you can SSH into. And you're also gonna want the same IP address given to that Raspberry Pi all the time. It'll just make your life a lot easier. And so you can either hand that out from your router or you can set up a static IP address. And if you don't know how to do that, I've got tutorials on how to do both those things and I'll put those in the description below. All right. And so now once you've done all that, let's go ahead and log into your Raspberry Pi. And so this is a fresh install of Raspbian. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is do a sudo app update to update our packages. All right, so what this does is just make sure we have the most up-to-date version of where all the packages are. And so now we're gonna use apt-get to install git. So we're just gonna do sudo apt install git. Just say yes. All right, and so now that that's installed, I'll go ahead and clear it and give us some space. All right, and so what you're actually gonna to wanna to do for best practice, if this is a serious code base, is you're really going to want to install it, not on the Raspberry Pi SD card, but instead grab an external hard drive or even a flash drive and have the repository live on there. The reason for this is simple. SD cards break. They are much more likely to break than flash drives. And so you don't want your Raspberry Pi's SD card to break and all of a sudden you've lost your entire repository. You would still have all of the code because it's kept on everyone's machines, but you would not have that history. And I would also recommend backing it up, especially if it's a more serious project. Now, if your SD card were to fail, but you had the repository on a flash drive plugged in, then you would be able to grab that, plug it into a new Raspberry Pi or a new installation on the same Raspberry Pi, and be able to get it up and working almost immediately again. And so that's what I would really recommend doing. It's just a much safer practice. And I've also got a tutorial in the description for how to set up a flash drive on a Raspberry Pi 
and so it'll act just like any other flash drive on a computer. And will automatically mount at boot up, so it's always there. But for this specific tutorial, I'm going to be breaking that rule and just doing it directly on the SD card itself. And so the first thing we're going to want to do is actually make a folder for the repos at the root directory. So we're going to do a sudo mkdir slash repo. And so now if we cd into the root level and do an ls, we'll see right here that we've created this repo folder. So let's go ahead and cd into it. All right, and so as you can see, there's nothing in the file yet. So now let's make our first project. And so what I would recommend doing for every single code project you've got, create a different directory in here. And so what we're gonna do here is actually make a directory for our code base. So we're gonna do it mkdir, and this project's gonna be about cat, so we're gonna call it cats. Ah, sorry, sudo mkdir. So now we've got this repository called cat in there. So let's cd into it. So now we're in the repository cats and it's empty, but that is good. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is now tell git that this is a repository for git. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do git init dash dash bear period. Ah, sorry, sudo. So now we have an empty repository in repo cats. So if we do an ls, we will see that there's a bunch of git stuff here and you're not going to want to be editing this at all. Another thing you are going to want to do, however, is go back to that root level repository. So we're going to do cd to repo, and we're going to want to make sure that everybody has read write access to this folder, because that way their git will be able to make the changes. So by doing that, we're going to do a sudo chmod dash r capital 777 and then period. So that will recursively change the modification rights for everybody. And so now everybody should have the ability to read, write, and execute code within this directory. So one other thing you're really going to want to make sure to do is this is your bare bones repository. That means you should not be editing any code within there or ever touching it. You should only ever be interfacing it within Git. So it should also be the one that is stored on the external drive, just in case your SD card failed. So now let's also just see what's going on with cats. So we're going to go into that cats file and we're going to do a git. And so you'll see right here that there are no commits yet to it. And so now let's go ahead and be able to do something. So right now, remember we are in this slash repo slash cats, right? So Let's exit out and go back to our home computer. I just typed in exit, which exited from the SSH shell back to my home computer. So I'm just gonna clear it. All right, so now I'm on my local machine and I've already got Git installed. You're going to have to install Git on whatever machine you've got. So go ahead and install Git. And for Mac, what we're gonna do is go into whatever folder we'd like to use for code. So I've already got one here, which is code. And so within here, I've got a bunch of different code projects, right? And so this is the folder that I use to store all my different code repositories as I'm working on them. And so we're gonna add in that cats one. So we're gonna do it just a git clone your pi username, the IP address of your pi, colon the path to that repository. So remember for me, that was slash repo slash cats. And you're gonna see here we have to enter a password. So warning, you appear to have cloned an empty repository, but we know that. So now let's go into that cats. And there's nothing in there. But let's just add something. We'll do a touch test. So now we have a new file. So for git, we're going to do a git add period for all. And so now we're going to do a git commit. 
So I'm skipping over a lot of the core functionality of Git here. There's a ton of tutorials online, but I'm just going through the steps right now. So now we're committing. And so I'm just going to edit this. Just always call it first commit. All right, and so now we've just committed those changes that we made, adding that file, to our own revision. However, it is not on the server yet. To get it on the server now, we're gonna to have to get it, do a git push. It's gonna ask for that password again. And just like that, we have now successfully gone and updated the master branch on that initial repository. And so that means it's working. We can continuously do our edits here and keep using Git as you normally would. So that's all great, right? However, there are two things we're gonna to wanna to do. First off, we do not wanna to have to type in our password every single time. All right, so to keep from having to type in our password every single time, we're gonna set up what's called SSH keys. And I've actually already got a tutorial on how to set up SSH keys on a Raspberry Pi. And so I'll link that in the description, but it's very easy if you've already got them set up on your computer. So I'm just gonna do it SSH-copy ID and give the login. All right, and so I just added those SSH keys. So now let's go ahead and just do a quick nano and edit that one file. So we just did an edit to that. So we're gonna do another git add and git commit. So we have now committed it and now let's do a git push. And see that time I did the push without having to type in a password because it had those SSH keys on there. So what I would do is give all of your friends accounts on that Raspberry Pi and have them all set up their own SSH keys. That way they'll all be able to send code in and have it work perfectly without having to type in a password every single time. All right, there still is one other thing. Doing this from command line gets very old very quickly. And so nobody really does that because it's so clunky. Instead, they use GUIs. And so my favorite text editor, which is Atom, actually has built-in Git support. So Atom is actually built by GitHub. And so we're gonna go in and open up, close out all of these, and we're going to open up a new project. And we're going to open up that cats script. And this is that directory. And so all I've done here is I opened up the cats git directory as a project in Atom. And so now let's say I'm writing some code. And so now I want to update those to the server. So it's got this great git over here. So now that I've saved it, we're gonna see right here that there are unstaged changes. And so to stage them, all you have to do is double click on them and it'll show you what the changes are. All right, and so now we go, okay, yeah, I like these changes. This is how we've changed it up. And so we're going to want to commit it. And we just type our commit message right here. And we can commit it to the master. So now we can also see right here that there is this push. So now all we gotta do is click push and without having to type our password or anything, it is now on that Git server. And so all of your friends will be able to merge in these code branches and Atom is a great way of managing a Git server. Another great one is Fork. Fork is much better for allowing you to visualize um, different repositories. So I'll go ahead and open up a new one and open up that cats again. And so right here, a fork is going to show us these are the different commits. This is where the master is. Master is local to our computer. And this is where the origin is. Origin is the one on the server, that Raspberry Pi that we set up. And so it is great for allowing you to see things. You can see all the commits. 
you can go through the two different time histories, and you can also do diffs. Then you can also do pulls, fetches, and commits. And so you can use something like fork to manage and see all the different repositories. But I'm not gonna go into the really intricate workings of Git because there's tons of information already online. And quite frankly, I'm not the person to give those tutorials. However, this is how you can super easily set up a Git server on your Raspberry Pi and so that you and your friends can have your own dedicated Git server for versioning code or even storing massive files. This works, say you're editing a bunch of different images and you want people's opinions. You can go back and look at old revisions and be able to say, oh wait, maybe we should go back to that. Git is a really great way of managing everything and I would highly recommend to use some kind of version management system for any code you're writing, even if it's just for yourself. All right, well that's all I've got for this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. Have a good one, bye.